Today I'm looking at a product called the Ham Dogger. This is basically a mold that allows you to make hot dog shaped hamburgers. So in this video I'm making three versions, one with just beef, one with beef in a cheese center, and another one that I made by hand to see if you even need a gadget like this. I should say I originally filmed this segment a couple of weeks ago and I was going to do a part of a larger video, but with everything that happened in the world, I scrapped the rest of the video and I'm just posting the ham dogger by itself. With that in mind, I hope you enjoy it. This is the ham dogger fully assembled. Let's take a closer look. Now this part is just to keep it in place. That doesn't really serve much other function than that. So what you have basically is a mold, kind of these two feet on here. Now the top is a little bit special because this can allow you to create a groove in which you can put various stuffings. Uh, I'm gonna probably just use that a little bit as well. The instructions say that you could use plastic wrap to keep the hamburger from sticking to the ham dogger. Someone on Amazon said you can use uh, cooking spray as well, so I'm gonna try both of those and see which one's best. And I'm gonna try one with just my hands without the ham dogger and see if I even need this at all. So let's get started. All right, I'm just gonna put this over that with the bottom in there. Like that, I guess. I guess. I've got a quarter pound of beef. Quarter pound of ground beef. That seems pretty simple. Just kind of fill that up a little bit. I've got the top. I'm going to put another piece of plastic wrap on the inside of that, like they say. I kind of think cooking spray might be easier than the plastic wrap. All right, I'm just pushing just pushing down. I'm, I'm not really quite sure if that's right or not. I feel like I'm getting some resistance in there. But let's see. Lift this up. Oh, wait. Wait a second. Wait a second. Maybe I, maybe I spoke too soon. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. The first one looks pretty good, I think. Not bad. We'll put this aside and do another one. Well, the nice thing about the plastic wrap is that it kept the ham dogger completely clean. It's like good as new. But it was also a little bit awkward having the plastic wrap in there. So let me try it with the cooking spray and see if that does any better. Now, normally when you create a stuffed burger, you take the two sections, you fill it, you pinch around the edges. But the hot dog shaped hamburger is so narrow that pinching it really didn't have a lot of room. So it didn't really work out so well for me. I think that with some practice, I could probably get it better. I just don't think that this is really geared for a stuffed burger shaped like a hot dog. But here's how that went. Now with the cooking spray version, I'm also going to do a little bit of a stuffing. I'm just going to put some cheese in there. You could put other things as well, but I'm going to try that out. So you're not supposed to put the entire amount of ground beef down first. You're supposed to put a layer, your, your center, and then the top part. So let's try that. All right, I have one eighth of a pound of ground beef. That's how it looks. <laughs> it's almost easier without the other part there. All right, now I can use this this top to form an indention. Not much of an indention there, is it? Ugh. Stay in there. I mean, I guess there's some of the, I guess it's an indention. Their instructions say that you can use all kinds of toppings and stuffings. They say baked beans, onions, cheese, french fries, black olives, peppers, pickles, bacon, chili, avocado, sauerkraut. Not a fan of sauerkraut, by the way. <laughs> Sorry. Mushrooms, jalapeno, salsa, and horseradish. I'm going with the basic cheese right now. So let's try it out. I'm going to put this back on there so the cheese doesn't go everywhere. I'm just going to kind of sprinkle it. Kind of like that, I guess. That's what I've got. And I'll take my other half of my quarter pound and just uh, spread it across the top here. I'm going to take this off one more time. No, I'm not. I think I need it this time. All right, and now I'm going to push this down and I'm going to remove this so you can see how it actually looks when I'm pressing it down. Okay, I think that's pretty well formed, but the meat is sticking to the top. Uh, this is it's getting kind of messy here. Oh man, come on now. Maybe the plastic wrap was better. <laughs> Maybe it was better. It's their product, they should know. Okay, this is working. That worked. This is not really fully formed though. It's just two pieces that are kind of laying on top of each other. This is not a fully formed hot dog or hamburger. I'm just gonna kind of slide it off there like that, like this. There we go. Oh yeah. 
I'm not very confident this is going to stay together. I must make it work. All right, and finally, I'm just gonna try a quarter pound of ground beef and making it by hand and see what I can do. This might be ugly. I've never tried to do this before. I don't think it's something people do that often, but let's, uh, let's find out. It can't be much different than making, like making Play-Doh, right? And I, I was a pro at that when I was a kid. Okay, this is a little bit longer than this. All right, the Ninja Foodie Grill is ready. Let's see what we got here. By the way, which one looks best to you guys? A, B, or C, which one looks best? This is the one I did by hand. Do I really need a special device for that? <laughs> I'm not sure. This, the one with the cheese, I, I pinch the sides as best I can to try to get it to stay together. I'm gonna gingerly put it on there. We'll see, but here we go. This one I gotta be really careful with. All right, there we go. Won't take long, let's see what happens. All right, I'm gonna flip these. Let's see what we got. All right, this one looks, looks pretty good, I think. This one I'm a lot worried about. Oh, it's, it's breaking in half. I'm not so convinced about that stuff one, but the other ones look okay. Let's see what we got here. I flipped these ones halfway through. I mean, I think it was all right. Now this one was a little bit problematic. It was... And here we go. Now it looks like the one that I made by hand and the ham dogger are about the same. The stuffing, you can see the seam is coming apart and I really tried to keep that seam closed. But there's really such a small difference between the two of them. Do you really need a separate device when you can do that yourself? I mean, this thing goes anywhere from 10 to $15. I'm gonna put the cheese dog in a bun and I'm gonna put the, the ham dogger itself in a bun. All right, there they are. Made by hand with cheese in the center and made with a ham dogger. Not a huge difference. It's gonna try it plain with no condiments on there. Just to see what flavors come through. Other than the appearance, which maybe might make you think you have maybe sausage or some sort of kibasa on there. Once you bite into it, it just tastes like a regular hamburger on a hamburger bun. So I can make them easy, just as easily myself. One of these was made by hand, one by the ham dogger. Which one looks better? This is made by hand, this is the ham dogger. Not much difference, free to make, 10 to 15 bucks to make. So after making one of these by hand, I'm not quite sure you need a separate device to do something like this. It seems a little bit gimmicky. I, I do. I guess there's some people that might have a need for something like this if they have physical limitations or they're just not very good at making one by hand. Uh, I guess that one occasion to make something like this would be say you're, so you're at home, you're hunkered down, you don't feel like going to the grocery store, you have hamburger meat, you've got hot dog buns. This might be an occasion to make something like this, but I still don't think you need a separate device to do it. Have you guys made hot dog shaped hamburgers or used the ham dog yourself? Tell me what you think in the comments below. Please follow my social profiles, progress pictures, videos as I go, and please subscribe for more product reviews from me, James White, with Freaking Reviews.